Hi everyone, welcome to episode 108. This is the first interview of the healing series that I am conducting and I am really excited to share with you this next guest, my very good friend, my soul brother, Jason Mefford, where we just sit and we chat and we talk about our experiences with healing. So in case you were wondering, Jason also has a podcast, so we decided that we were going to record one episode and share it on both of our podcasts. So sometimes it sounds like Jason is the host, but we figured we'll be super, super efficient because we thought that this message is so important to be on both of our podcasts. So Without further ado, I can't wait to share this podcast episode with you. Please listen to my talk on healing with Jason Mefford. Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am a prosperity coach for the newly awakened or awake curious, driven overachiever and overdoer. After running a successful acupuncture practice in Boston for 12 years, I decided to hang my hat by closing the practice and pursue what it is that I'm really meant to do in this world, and that is to serve humanity online on a global scale. Using my background in Chinese medicine, along with the brain science of habits, spirituality, and divine masculine and feminine energy balance, I am here to help you not just understand, but know how powerful you are and that you are the person who is responsible for having the finances, inner peace, radiant health, and energy aka the fire in your life that you've always desired my intention with this podcast is to serve humanity no matter what gender you identify as to help bring out the divine feminine goddess in each and every one of you as you probably are already aware the world is changing and is begging for the goddess to come out in each and every one of you so fire goddesses Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. I'm Jason Mefford, and I am here with my very, very, very good friend, Angela Noel. And uh, we thought we would do something fun. So if you're listening to Angela's right now, you might be like, who's this guy's voice? (laughs) Right? (laughs) But we're friends. We both have podcasts, and uh, we have some similar things that we're kind of going through. um, And we just thought, you know what? It would be fun just to do one episode, right? So we come together and we talk as friends, but it's an episode that we can share on both of our podcasts. So that's what it is. So uh, here here we go. So Angela, (laughs) you know, we were talking before um, and we kind of wanted to do it in the theme of, you know, kind of a little, I don't know what you call it, a series that you're doing on your podcast, right around healing. So yes. kind of explain that. And then we're just going to start talking and we're going to let spirit take us where it takes us. And it's going to be what it's going to be. So I love this, Jason. Thank you so much for that introduction, that robust intro. Robust, <laughs> robusto, like my coffee. I like it. Robusto, like my coffee. <laughs> my that's my leo my leo brother <laughs> talking right there we are in leo season now so this is uh, <laughs> yeah welcome everybody to the lion's gate right us uh, lions okay. don't get hit as hard as the rest of you do during <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I oh, joke. Okay. anyway um so yes hello to jason's audience hello to my audience and what an honor to be doing this this series. If you listen to my uh, previous episode, those of you who are in my audience, you know that I am doing a healing series into Jason's audience. I'm doing a healing series. And, and who really- doesn't need healing, right? We all need healing. So it's a good topic for both. We all need healing. And I'm just sensing more and more that it's time to uh, buck up 
and share more information to our audiences, to our people, to those who, who need it, who uh, maybe need it and don't realize they need it, how important it is to heal. And so I'm going to be doing a series of, I don't know, seven, eight episodes on healing, bringing in very, very special guests. And Jason, you are my first guest. Ooh, thank yes. you. <laughs> the honor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and, and I know too, you know, I mean, for my audience, some of you may be like healing. Well, no, I mean, if you've been listening to me, I talk about whatever we, what I want to talk about, right? But healing is so important. And I think, you know, Angela and I are very good friends and we've known each other for, for several years. Um, we've gone through some similar experiences, uh, life experiences as well. Uh, we're both healing and have healed from some major things recently. And um, so we thought it would be it would be fun to talk and just you know, again, joking wise, right? I mean, before we started, Angela's like, Jason, you look like a teenager today. Like, yes, you, do. like you look younger than you used to look. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I had the I had this big ass long, you know, white beard, you yeah. know, but I'm looking younger, right, than I was before. And that is because I have healed from certain things and I am continuing to heal. From certain things right mm -hmm. and again i mean thanks to angela for bringing this up and for kind of doing this because um i i probably need to share because for people that that have known me for a while and angela's known me for several years i'm a different person now than i was a year ago yes you are and i have really changed in the last two or three months Yes, you maybe, have. Maybe, maybe four or five months, but especially the last two or three months, right? You have. And I, I mean, I just saw you Saturday and it's only been four days ago. And I think, Jason, you have, I mean, you look like 10 years younger, at least. I mean, I said, what did I say to you? I said, you look like a teenager. Yeah. And I wasn't kidding. Huh. Well, and, and the same thing goes for Angela, right? So again, I've known Angela for a while. And the last few months, especially, she looks brighter, lighter, happier, right? And, and I'll tell you, you know, I mean, again, you can kind of share your story or however much you want to, but I, I was in a relationship that was very heavy. I was, I was in a relationship with a person who was very draining and very needy. And I was giving away a lot of my personal power. I, I felt like a slave almost and like a beat down dog, right? Is, is kind of the way that I could describe. And Angela's probably seen me show up at certain times like that, right? Where I looked like a beat down dog. And what, what I mean by that, right? Is like for everybody, if, if, you, if you've seen a dog that's been abused, right? Like, like hit often by its, by its owners, those dogs kind of cower all the time and are always trying to like not be seen. Um, and I kind of felt like that. Right. And, but I, I had to do some things, uh, you know, to get out of that relationship, to physically move myself away. And that's probably been the biggest thing again, because the last two to three months that I've physically been removed from that particular environment, I've started to flourish again. And, and so I think, you know, again, I don't know where, guide me on where you want to go about the healing too, Angela, but I, yeah. I know when, when you were asking about that, I think one important thing about healing is to get away from whatever is harming you. Oh, yes. Okay. Well said. You, you cannot heal mm -hmm. until you remove yourself from the person, place, thing, whatever it is that is, is damaging you or that has caused you the trauma or anything else, right? So I could not start to flourish until I physically removed myself from the relationship, right? Now, I was healing the whole time. And so the whole time going, you know, from 
from the time of we're getting divorced and kind of going through the whole divorce uh, proceedings, I was changing, but until I physically moved out of the house and physically moved to a different state. So I really distanced myself. That was when I started to grow. And so it was like, I was this little plant in this dark house that was trying to grow. And I was giving myself water. I was giving myself fertilizer, but I was being smothered and I couldn't see the light. Jason, that is powerful. And until I transplanted myself to where I could see the sun, that's when I really took off. I was still growing. I was still doing everything I could, but I had to physically transplant myself in order to start flourishing. And that's why, uh, and I appreciate my friends like Angela who tell me this because again, I'm with myself every day. I don't know this. I don't notice myself, right? (laughs) Except for when I look in the mirror in the morning, I'm like, oh man, you look good. (laughs) No, I really don't do that. (laughs) But you should and everybody should. I should, everybody should, right? Everybody should do that. But self-love. But yeah, I think that's why literally the last two to three months, there's been this acceleration because I've gotten away from the things that were holding me back. And I'm not saying that my ex-wife was holding me back, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the overall environment that I was in, right, which also included the geography where I was living, uh, the clients I was working with, things I was doing, I had to remove myself from those things in order to really start growing. So I I thought, you know, again, if we're like trying to make different points of, hey, that that's probably a very important part because until people do that, they're they're gonna have a hell of a time trying to heal. Oh. So I feel like there's gonna be so many people that are listening in the audience that are gonna just be like, I mean, what you just said, Jason, that was I, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is you just said something else that's more powerful, and that's even more powerful. And also, you know. Um, I'm so grateful that you are, are openly sharing, vulnerably sharing your experience for a few reasons. A, it's because when we share and other people hear what we share, you know, our hardships and whatever it is that we're going through, that feels like we're literally, I talked about in the last episode, going through a dark night of the soul. Other people feel it's healing for them to hear that too. And also just as a man, you're sharing vulnerably right now. Like that's amazing. And I'm a man. You're a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Oh my God. It took me 50 years to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, the masculine, the, the masculine, it needs to, we're, cussing is allowed right on your on your show fuck yeah okay <laughs> the masculine needs to buck the fuck up but the masculine also needs guidance right yeah. and the masculine needs help and the fact that you just shared what you shared as a man that you went through this and that you went through this relationship that was not that was you use words like um slavery and smothering I believe, Mm -hmm. and where you were just giving, 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 and just, you felt exhausted. And that's, for those listening, that that is going to wear you out. And I love how you touched upon that when you, so you can be doing all the right things, right? So I talk about this with health and wellness because I'm an acupuncturist and a, a wellness person, right? You can be doing all the right things in wellness. You can be eating the right foods and, and following all the protocols and taking all your supplements and exercising and doing everything perfectly. But that same individual, since we're being candid, 
that same individual can also be that person that one day miraculously develops cancer or sadly could have a heart attack. Why? Because they're not addressing the whole thing. You're, you're not addressing the whole being that is you. So what we're gonna talk about today is I, I just love this subject and I lost my train of thought here, but <laughs> where was well, I good, going? Then I get to jump in yes. and make you feel uncomfortable now. <laughs> jump in. All right. I made you feel uncomfortable. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, because because I I you know I think you're right like that with the sharing too, because you know, again, it's other people I'm sure are going through similar things. Other people are feeling like that little plant that's trying so hard to grow, but is being smothered and left in the dark. And you're trying to do the best you can, but you just don't know what to do, right? And as I was sharing that again, uh, and I know you very well, but I could feel your energy too. Uh, this was, That was exactly what you were going through too. I mean, our what's, what's, what's weird is how... Uh, how parallel our lives have kind of played out right so so i want you because again i know you've kind of shared on your on your side on your podcast too but maybe share a little bit here too mm -hmm. about um you know what's happened to you for the last six months because it's pretty much what's happened to me <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah. and now we're neighbors you know pretty much i mean Literally. we're like 150 yards from each other where we live now yeah. um so so yeah maybe just kind of share with people because I think also I mean I shared my story but you sharing yours I think they're going to see and it's just going to be another you know check mark of evidence of you know well yeah it happened to that Jason guy but it doesn't happen to anybody else mm -hmm. um because yeah I've been amazed at how parallel our lives have gone the last few months yeah yeah. So to, to I, I just wanted to finish that last thought too, because if you're not like, if you're not taking care of the whole person, you're not necessarily taking care of the whole, you're not taking care of the whole person. So um, I remember as a health person, like I ate well, I ate clean, I exercised, I focused, I worked on my sleep, but I was in a toxic relationship with my husband. And it went on for a very long time. And, and, and for those listening, you know, you guys know that I never intend to, I, I don't want to make somebody look bad because this is, this is my story and this is my side of the story. But I was in a marriage with somebody that was, it felt like I wasn't heard. It felt like I was definitely not getting my love language met and this went on for years and years and years with this idea that one day things are going to change. And I was also just really, really terrified of having those conversations, having those uncomfortable conversations with people, with, with him specifically, like, Hey, you know, we need to look at this. This is, there's something not right. So as a result, avoidance tactic, so many people have it. We never talked about it. And when, let me just say something about love languages, whatever, you know, whatever your love language is, if you follow that, or it could just be like, there's something that you appreciate receiving from your partner, whether it be being heard, being fe feeling seen, feeling, feeling unconditionally loved, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what is going on, you feel loved and supported. That's going to eat away at your relationship over time. It's not just going to go away. And that's what happened in my relationship. My love languages weren't met and I started spending money because I wanted to improve my life. I wanted to, I wanted, I, I didn't want to live like this anymore. And I really legit, I was in therapy. It wasn't really doing anything as far as moving the needle forward. So I was like, all right, well, screw therapy. I'm going to start figuring this out for myself. And I started investing in programs and investing in coaches and investing in, in self-development work that was going to help me. And as a result, I went into a shit ton of debt. 
I didn't tell my husband because there's no way that he would, he would, he just wasn't supportive of anything that was alternative or weird, you know, quote unquote weird or, um, so I don't, I want to be really respectful about what I say about him. It's, I don't want to bash him. We just, our values were not the same. And, and when you're in a relationship with somebody and your values change or your values are not the same from the get go, it's going to create a lot of problems. And that's what happened with us. So I spent money, I went into debt and I didn't tell him about it. And that was kind of, um, there were some other things that were going on. I got really into my spiritual practices he thought it was weird. He thought it was strange. He just wasn't supportive. I didn't feel supported. And that was the end of our relationship. And another thing I want to add about this is, you know, if you're healing and the other person is choosing not to do the work, or if you're not parallel in that regard with, with your value on healing and making yourself a better person, as far as your values being equal, because, you know, the other person could think they're, they're becoming a better person, but if you're not on the same page with that, it just becomes really, really difficult to grow together. So, um, as a result, I, um, I got divorced. My divorce was final a year ago, like exactly a year ago, a few days ago, basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, Ultimately, I lived in Boston for another year or so after I moved out, but then I moved to Sedona in May of this year. And what I want to say about this is if you think you've healed, like you talked about removing yourself from the environment, when you remove yourself from that environment, for me, it wasn't only the marriage, but it was being in that city, being in Boston. Um, I was living in a property that we owned together. I needed to let all that go. And I needed to move myself, get my ass out of Boston and move someplace else. And I want to tell you, I thought I had healed when I got here. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, uh. The healing, and I talked about this in my previous episode, the healing really started when I got here. Like the deep, 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 uncomfortable healing that some might avoid because it's painful, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. And I would never, I would never take that part of my life back. And what I want to say about healing, and Jason, I'd love for you to comment on this too, is when we heal, and when we choose to heal, so much more opens up for us on the other side. It, and it, it's, it can feel beyond your imagination, but it's all possible. So, you know, I would love if you could comment on that too. Like, you know, what becomes possible when you really choose to get very, very uncomfortable? in this journey well and it's you know again we can go back to kind of that little plant analogy that i had right is it's you know if, if you're that little plant in the poor poor soil in the dark you know wherever you happen to be from from that perspective that's all you know right all you know is what you've experienced and so, so much of our life, right, we, we grow up, we get taught what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to act, the type of relationships we're supposed to have, right? And hey, this last one, that was my second divorce. So as far as most of the world is concerned, I'm an asshole, loser guy that just can't deal with relationships, right? I, most of the world would look at me like, oh, He's been divorced twice. There must be something wrong with him, right? All right, whatever. Uh, but but you don't know what's actually possible until you have that different perspective. And sometimes that perspective change is uncomfortable. It's hard. Sometimes it hurts a little bit, right? It's like I used I used to get 
I used to work construction. I used to, uh, uh, you know, carry wood a lot for like, uh, you know, to burn when I was a little kid. So I'd get, I'd get splinters a lot of times in my hands. And sometimes the splinters, um, you don't even really notice, right? But um, until you, you know, if, if, if you don't do anything about it, eventually it starts to fester and get <clears throat> infected and hurt until you end up pulling it out. Now, a lot of times when I was younger, I didn't want to pull it out because I knew it was going to hurt, right? It hurts to pull out a big sliver in your hand, but it hurts a lot more over a longer period of time to let it sit there and fester, right? So whether you're transplanting that little plant or tree to somewhere else, that plant goes through some shock, right? That's why when you when you plant, you know, new flowers or you transplant stuff, you put water, you know, I was taught, you know, you dig the hole, put water down in the bottom to make sure that there's water, the water gets down there, make sure and water it well, right? Because the little plants over there are going, ah, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, right? So you get a little extra water, you give it some fertilizer, you help kind of get it reestablished, right? Same thing, you, you, pull the, you pull the sliver out, hurts like hell at first, but then you gotta you know, clean the wound, you bandage it, you do all the stuff, and eventually over time, it heals itself. And I think one of the things too, sometimes with healing is, you don't have to be so concerned about the healing itself. The healing takes place on its own. So just like when I pull that sliver out of my hand, I don't have to sit there every day and go, come on, heal finger, heal, heal, heal. Right? And when I say that, I'm, it's like I'm talking to a dog, right? Heal, dog, heal. <laughs> I don't have to sit there and do that, right? Nope. I pull it out. I clean it. I do what I can do, the little bit that I can do. I wrap it up, I bandage it, and I go about my business. And my body heals itself. If you remove the splinter, it can heal itself if you remove the splinter, right? Our soul, our light being, whatever word you use, can heal itself too, right? You just got to get out whatever that little sliver happens to be, you've got to do your little daily practices and your intentions and whatever else, you know, making sure to manage your energy, uh, manage your personal power, keeping your emotions where they need to be. And if you do that, guess what? Your light being just like your physical body knows how to heal itself once you take out whatever needs to be taken out that's causing the problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's another thing sometimes with healing and uh, I can't remember, M Mujani, uh, Anita Mujani, right? Yes. With, I can't remember her, the name of her book, Anita but yeah. yeah, but she wrote a book. And I think one of the main takeaways from that is you're never healed until you realize you don't need to be healed which again seems like totally counter, but it's not, right? Because when I pulled that sliver out and I'm like, oh, what do I need to do? Well, I need to pull it out, I need to wash it, maybe put a little medicine on it. If it's big enough, maybe put a Band-Aid on it. And then I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to do anything about it, maybe for the next day. And then I take the Band-Aid off, look at it, maybe put a little bit more medicine on it, wrap the Band-Aid up again, and then I don't have to worry about it again right? Because I've done the little bit that I need to do, my body will take care of the rest, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that same thing that if you will, even spiritually speaking, right? If you're healing spiritually or emotionally, you do the little things that you can do best you can each day, 
And then you allow your body and your soul to do the main work because they're doing, it's doing the main lifting, right? Exactly. And I've seen that in my life, right? I've just continued to set my intention each day, right? Try to try to do everything with love and respect and kindness and humbleness in everything that I do. Try to be happy, feel peaceful, right? That's my job. That's my job. And if I do that job each day, you look like a teenager. That's true. After only a couple months, right? <laughs> And that's, you know, I'm joking, but I'm not joking, everybody. No, okay. I mean, Jason, I have seen you um, on the regular since last August, um, like every two months. Uh, and, you know, more regularly since we both live in Sedona now. And I mean, you look like a totally different person, like totally. So for, for people that are, are, are listening and, you know, there's so much focus in our society around um aging in reverse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and fighting the aging process you guys like this is it this is the magic right here you don't need to do anything else i mean yes take care of your body and you know buy the products that you feel serve your to make your skin look nice ideally natural as natural as possible but let go of the baggage just let it go, let it go. And side note, if you're like, I don't know, I don't know how to do this or how do I do this? Your soul knows, Yeah. you know? So just, just stop the chatter and give yourself, even if it's five minutes a day of no noise and just tune in. And you will receive all the guidance that you need. I, I'm not kidding. Like everything that you need is within you, within your intuition. But you need to allow for that information to come in. And like you were talking about the splinter, like it's not going to come through if there's a, a splinter, which is your overthinking mind always getting in the way or your, um, you know, a lot of us are so hard on ourselves and beating ourselves up. Like that's not going to help you either. So if you want to be young and youthful, try this first before you go to the plastic <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> well, no, and and I'll tell you. I mean, because honestly, I mean, I'm just I, I I haven't even thought of it this way. You know, until we're talking now. So thank you, Angela, for bringing this up. Right, but um, you've seen a big difference in me in the last two or three months. Right. And like you said, even just this last week. Now, what I will tell you, folks, is, um, yeah, do I take supplements? Yes, I do. But I've been doing that for years. Right. I'm taking a few different things, but pretty much for this whole last year of my life, I've pretty much taken the same supplements. I've had some of the same um, practices that I do each day but I haven't done every one of them every day, right? And, and sometimes I'm more diligent in it. Some days I feel like doing one thing, other days I feel like doing something else, right? Um, I've actually honestly probably eaten more shit food since I've been here only because, you know, by yourself, you know, hey, you know, throw in a frozen dinner, uh, you know, so I, I haven't, I haven't, but I haven't really changed anything with what I eat. I haven't been exercising, right. Other than doing chores around the house, but in the last week, I haven't even really been doing that. So that can't be what, whatever happened this last week that Angela was talking about. Right. But, and, and even before I'd still been trying to uh, stay in that vibration and frequency of, you know, doing everything with love and kindness and respect and everything I can do to, to be at peace and at joy and just, just feel that peace and joy in my life 
as much as I can and share that with other people, right? I was doing that before the last couple of months. But maybe one of the differences there is I was being drained so much, right, by a lot of the different responsibilities that I had and the things that I had taken on and that smothering that maybe I wasn't quite as effective at doing those things. I don't know. But so I haven't really done much difference except get out to where I actually have the sun. And actually, literally, so here's a funny thing, right? I am actually sitting in the sun more. So Jason is the little plant who uh, I am. <laughs> I usually watch the sun come up and I watch the sun go down. Yeah. And I sit uh, and have the sun rays on me every single day. Um, interesting. Hmm. Something for Jason to think about afterwards too. But my point, my point was, right, is the main thing that has changed for me is changing environment. Mm -hmm. Because the other stuff, I've pretty much been doing the same. Yeah. Only now, like I said, maybe it's more effective when I'm doing those things because I, I don't have to push as hard or strain as hard, right? Like the little plant straining to try to find any, any sunlight, right? And I'm sure everybody who's listening, you've seen this, right? Where like sometimes you'll find a plant that's in the shade mainly, like most of the day, but it'll grow kind of weird. Like, so it can, it, it tries to get to the light, but it's really hard. It's hard to do that. It takes a lot of effort, right? As opposed to the plants who have good sunlight all the time, it makes things easier. So I don't know how to think about that, Marvin. Maybe there's something to that too. Huh? Something to sit with. Yeah. I, and, you know, I think just to paraphrase what you're saying, Jason, is the, the effort. I think a lot of times humans, we try to make things so hard, right? Or we overthink our way to, you know, it, it doesn't, to the round room, right? And it doesn't really work out very well in our favor when it comes to getting what we want and to growing and healing. But what you're saying, Jason, is that basically um, the body, it, it, we don't need to put in a lot of effort. The only effort really that we need to put in is to figure out what we need to do every day or who we need to be every day to foster that and cultivate that, that growth and that healing. And it might be that you feel a little sleepy at three o'clock every day and you need to take a nap for 10 minutes, or it could be. Not that, that that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> yeah me neither we have, a, we have an inside joke about that so anyway, yeah right. yeah napping is uh oh, napping is my friend for sure but um so so the body knows exactly what to do but sometimes there is a you know there is that one thing and that seems to be that thing that confuses people and it's like i don't know why i got sick i'm so healthy or i don't know why you know so and so had a heart attack she was so healthy this is an opportunity and an invitation. And I, I feel that Jason, before we, we talked or before we, we hit record, we were saying, you know, it's go time. We need to start speaking up and speaking out and speaking strongly and using language that's gonna get people's attention. If that's what it means, we do. This is your invitation. If you're listening this far to figure out what it is you need to let go of, surrender, detach from, so that you can, so that you can heal. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and, and I think too, maybe to stop listening to all the people that are telling you how to heal. Right. So this is another thing that I, that I'll tell everybody, right. Is if I, if I lined out and I, I like put together a list of all the, the different experiences or things that I've had in the last six months or year, a lot of people would say, Oh, Jason, you really need to 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 go to hypnotherapy. You've you've got to have a bunch of hypnotherapy sessions, and that's going to end up, you know, 
helping you get rid of whatever trauma and gosh i'm sure there's something from your childhood that's a, that's an issue that's holding you back and and so maybe you need to get into this coaching program because you know only in that coaching program you know are you really going to learn how to uh how to work through your problems or gosh jason you really need to go see a therapist or a a psychiatrist, maybe you need to be on medication, right? These are all things that people would tell me, right? These are all the kinds of things that people would have told me if I told them what I was going through. I don't tell people what I go through most of the time, right? Like for some of you, this is going to be the first time you've even heard that I moved or that I got divorced or anything because I, I just don't talk about it. I deal with my shit quickly and I move through it right because if I listen to every Tom Dick and Harry and some of them are bigger dicks than others telling me to do certain things or not do certain things right then I get confused and I get slowed down but I'm the only one who knows what's exactly right for me right and so you know, I think sometimes when you really want to heal, you've got to quit listening to everybody else. Oh my gosh, Angela, if you just sign up for my multi-level marketing, uh, you know, food supplement, then in, 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 you know, 30 days, you're going to look 10 years younger. Yeah. Bullshit. Bullshit. Right. It doesn't work that way. But some suckers trying to get you to spend money with them. Now, some of the stuff works better than others, and I'm not disparaging anybody who sells any products or does anything like this. There are some people who are lying and taking people's money and not doing a good thing. I think most people think that they're helping, but the real help comes from inside, right? You know, it's it's like the finger or any of the other stuff that we were talking about. And Angela, you said it too, right? It's like we already know what to do. I don't have to have any knowledge of biology or medicine. But if I know, pull out the splinter, right? My basic first aid skills from being a Boy Scout, pull it out, clean it, medicine, Band-Aid, done. That's all you got to do. And we are not just giving do it and let advice. your body do the rest. Yeah, we are. We are not giving medical advice. We are just serving as guides based on our experiences to help you. And one thing that I wanted to say is. I well, lost my thought. I was. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one who does it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. So. Um, no, yeah, because I, I wanted and, to. Oh, I was going to say, because, you know, you're right. I mean, we're not doing medical advice. I'm not telling you to go to a doctor. Don't go to a doctor. You have to decide that. But I guess the point I was trying to make is I didn't do any of those things either. So those things weren't what's happened to me the last two or three months. So for those people who are listening, who are used to being more um, externally um, motivated, who need external validation, they're used to going to everybody else for guidance and, but they know that they are, they need some help, but they're like, I don't know how to follow my intuition. I don't know how to trust my internal guidance. I don't, this is all sounds great, Jason and Angela, but um, how the heck do I get started with this? Like, cause I think a lot of times we hear stuff like this and people might think, well, yeah, that's, that's great and everything, but it doesn't, I don't even know how to get started. It doesn't sound realistic. Um, you know, this is after just they're, they they're used to living a life of being in the matrix. Mm -hmm. So what are some really simple, I'd love if we could just jam about this, like simple things just to get started. Like, how can I trust myself right now? How can I, how can I learn just to surrender and make it yeah. easy right now? Well, and I think one of the things that I tell people all the time, and this is going to sound a little counter, right? But I think it's, um, I've, I've kind of thought, I was talking to a friend this week about 
kind of the whole analogy of we are like a musical instrument that's gotten very dirty and out of tune. And so really we only have two jobs to do in this world is clean our instrument and tune it. Now you can tune it, but if it's, if it's got a bunch of mud or grease all over it, it's not going to sound as good as if it's cleaned and tuned, right? And, you know, from a, from a healing perspective or from a listening from an intuition perspective, I think sometimes we forget, right? There's certain things that we might need to kind of clean up to be able to get that connection, right? Because if, if you're trying to go over corroded electric wires, the energy doesn't pass very well. But if you clean it, right, then it's a little different, right? Again, think about, it. I mean, everybody, I know most of the batteries now are just like built into everything, but you remember the old days where, you know, the batteries would run out or they'd get the corrosion in it because it'd like explode and you had to take it out and kind of clean, clean the wires and then put new batteries in? Well, that's what we got to do with ourselves as well, right? And so, you know, to me, a very simple thing just to start is just to try to feel happy or at peace for a few minutes each day. And I know some people are going to be like, well, how the hell do I do that? I hate my life. Well, is there anything in your life that, that gives you joy? Do you like reading? Do you like listening to music? Do you like watching movies, right? I'm just throwing three things out there that are forms of entertainment. I happen to like music. So, you know, what if you could just sit and listen to a song a couple of times, some song, you pick whichever song you want, but it's a song that makes you feel happy. And if you will just sit and listen to that song maybe two or three times, so it's five or 10 minutes out of the day, not a lot of time, but just sit and enjoy and be in joy and be happy for that five or 10 minutes a day. That's a start. You do that a few times. As you're doing that, you're effectively starting to clean your wires. And it's going to be easier for you to start receiving, right? Or just like our little plant, moving it to where the sun is more, right? You're just trying to get a little bit more sunlight each day. Because most of the time, again, I mean, don't go out and transplant the whole thing and make like a huge change in your life necessarily, but starts with something small, right? Can you do something that makes you feel happy for a few minutes every day? Can you do something every day to show someone else love or to serve someone else? Right. I mean, I was a Boy Scout and Angela and I joke about this because she's familiar with the Boy Scouts and she thinks I can do everything because I'm an Eagle Scout and I can, I can and I can't. But anyway, <laughs> but, um, you know, one of the one of the, the uh, things that you're taught as a scout is do a good turn daily. Right. Do a good turn daily. So do something good every day. Can you say hi to a stranger? Can you smile or wave at somebody who looks like they're not having a good day? Can you compliment somebody on, you know, something about themselves? Oh, Angela, you, you, your eyes look so beautiful today, right? Again, or something that's not so, you know, personal appearance necessarily related, but something about the person, right? Can you, can you give a genuine comment, you know, or, or, or uh, what do you call it? Does any, somebody, right? Can you... Can you send a text that just says, hey, Angela, been thinking about you. Hope everything's well. Sending you love. Boom. Right? To somebody maybe that you haven't talked to in a long time. And make it heartfelt, obviously. But can you do little things like that? Because I have found the more I do little things like that, the easier it is for me to connect to source and to actually hear. Right? Because if I'm just all concerned and all consumed in my shit, then I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I'm only worried about myself. Mm. How am I going to fix this? 
Yeah. How am I going to get through this? Mm -hmm. Oh, woe is me, right? And that's how people tend to be. But how much of the time when you're helping somebody else or you're doing something or you're listening to music you love or you're taking a shower, boom, right? You get some kind of little hit or some kind of inspiration that comes through because you're effectively kind of cleaning and tuning your instrument just a little bit, yeah. right? And some of us have a lot of dirt and we're way out of tune, <laughs> Right. And some of us, you know, we're all different. And just because you cleaned your instrument and you tuned it, hey, I got to tune my guitar every so often. Right. That's just the way it, the cookie crumbles. You, you got to do You got to keep doing it. But um, that's a very simple thing that I. That I use and that I suggest to a lot of people. It's a beautiful one. And I would just add too. you mentioned. Uh... You know, when you when you get those like uh, hints, like in the shower or something like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, reach out to so and so or I'm thinking of this person. I wonder how they're doing. Trust that. Trust just, it. And just that do it. Truth. That is your truth speaking to you. That is your uh, your soul speaking to you. That is your intuition and your wisdom speaking to you. Trust it. Do it. And your life is just going to radically change and open up. And like you said, you're going to connect to source more and more. Um, and that's a beautiful exercise too. Um, I'm going to add one thing that I started doing in the beginning. I don't know. I, probably when I was in one of my darkest nights of the soul, when I was going through a lot of depression and my episodes lasted for days and days and days. Um, I read about this exercise. I think it's from the positive psychology community. I'm pretty sure that's I was I was into that for a while and it's called the www exercise and it's not the world wide web <laughs> not the internet of things <laughs> no it's what went well so you go to bed at night so I got into this I don't do this as much anymore and I, I, I still do it actually especially when I'm feeling like you know I'm in I'm if I'm starting to feel like I'm getting into my self-importance I, this is a tool I go back to as I'm going to sleep. I do my gratitude. I'm thankful for, you know, I'm thankful for my dog, Ayla, and my cat, Belle. And I'm thankful for my soul family and all my people. And then I go through the day from beginning to end. What went well today? Well, oftentimes I just, if I don't know what went well in my life, like if I'm really that down in the dumps, I'll start with, I woke up today. I woke up today. I, I had another day on this earth. And that kind of opens up for more. And it might just be, you just have that one thing. Okay, the next time you do it, there'll probably be one and a half things or two things or three things. And I find that that's really powerful. And then also gratitude calms the nervous system so that you can sleep better. So I, I love that exercise. I recommend that to all of my clients, to my patients, when I used to have acupuncture patients. And it's just a beautiful exercise. So I love, I love, there's so many little tricks, I think, to being in high vibration or to getting into high vibration. Yeah, because really any, any of those little things that get you into that higher vibration, is helping you heal. That's right. And maybe we'll talk about that some future time because we don't have time today. But um, all you have to do to heal is raise your vibration. Yes. And so what Angela just talked about with the, what went well and kind of having some gratitude things with what I was talking about of taking, you know, five or 10 minutes for yourself to listen to music or read or whatever it is that happens to make you happy, but sitting for those few minutes in that higher state of vibration and frequency, uh, you know, helping other people, all of these things are a way to raise your vibration. And if you do enough of the little things and you just let your body and your soul do what they need to do, 
and you're effectively giving yourself the, the extra sunlight that helps you also from a vibration standpoint, everything starts to take care of itself and you don't have to do anything, right? Yes. I've lost 30 or 40 pounds without doing anything any of the weight loss people would tell me to do. I don't even know how I did it other than I would say that I've raised my frequency and my vibration over the time. Um, or like the last two months for me, what have I done different? Not a whole lot other than being transplanted. So I have more sun and, and maybe also have more time to be able to spend doing some of these little things because I don't have all the obligations that I used to have. Right. Um, but yeah, we can all heal. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, again, I know for everybody from my podcast, I'm sure again, it's kind of like, this is a little bit of a different episode, but there's probably going to be more like this on mine. And hopefully <laughs> it, uh, it lines up well with kind of the, the topic for the series that, that Angela's got. So I think before we wrap out of here, you got anything else that, uh, no, I think we touched upon a lot of great things. We were able to share vulnerably. We offered some some feedback for those who might resonate with this episode, maybe a little too too much. Not never there can never be too much, but it is our intention to help heal humanity. And really the uh, like you said, Jason, the only way you can really truly heal is to raise your vibration. Yes. so yeah, yeah raise your raise your vibration and just do the little things that only you can do mm -hmm. right i could i could grab your hand angela and i could i could force out the splinter but that's not how it works right the reality is if you have a splinter in your hand you've got to pull it out you've got to do the little things and then keep your vibration up everything else is going to start to take care of itself. Yeah. And trust us, it's all possible. <laughs> We've been on right for a little while, so. That's right, yeah. that's right. Thank you, Jason, so much for this, this interview. I'm so grateful for you. I feel like uh, my audience is really going to benefit from hearing from you. And just thank you for sharing what you shared. It's not easy. I know for a lot of people to share what they've been through, but I know that there's people listening that are going to really benefit in their healing journey by hearing your story so thank you so much i'm so grateful well and thank you answer. angela too for for um did you, even though i have lived through it actually speaking it out loud uh has helped me in my healing as well and maybe kind of understanding a little bit more of what i'm going through as well um, so yeah, again, hopefully it's helpful for everybody because our intention is to help humanity heal and to, to grow and, um, yeah. So whether you listen to Angela's podcast, whether you listen to mine, whether you listen to both, you know, have a, have a great week, have a blessed week. And, um, we wish you healing and love in your life. Yes. Remember to be radiant, be powerfully authentic, and know that you can reclaim your fire at any time. Thank you. And with that, thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Bye. Hi, this is Angela Noel, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you have found value in listening to this podcast, I would be so grateful if you could kindly share this podcast with those you care about. Please help me spread the word of empowerment and possibility and expansion by sharing this podcast. Or you could also leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Remember to follow me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel, or you could go to my website at www. AngelaNoelInternational.com to learn more about my work and to find out how you can work with me. Thank you very much.